Hey guys, how's it going? Well, I did a little studying today and I am ready to do my first teaching in my new apartment, in my new setup here, so I'm very excited. And uh, I want to go over some of the false Calvinist doctrine and I want to refute it a little bit. And um, so before I get to the point, I'm going to do a little bit of talking, but I, uh, I've, done, I've talked about Calvinist, Calvinism before. I'm not a Calvinist. I never have been. Um, but this is something that I'm passionate about. This is something that I'm a big fan of Dave Hunt for because of his book, What Love Is This? Um, I have it up here. But anyways, it, you can also find a video on YouTube of What Love Is This where he just he talks and he's going over the points that are in his book. Um, you know, Calvinism is a really popular false doctrine. It's unbelievable how popular it is. And, you know, just like it is unbelievable with Catholicism and Islam and all the other false religions. And I basically think that Calvinism is a false religion uh, in itself. But, um, it's you know, it's basically got a false gospel. And I've talked about that before in other videos. But I really want to go over all the different verses that they use. I really want to go into detail. And I'm going to be going over stuff over and over again. So I'm going to go over what I go over today more in more detail. It'll come up again. And for right now, I'm just going to throw a lot of videos out there, and I'm not going to really present things really well or edit things. But, you know, the idea is that, you know, I worked on this study that I'm going over today. This is a portion of the study that I put together on the website. So there's a lot more verses on the website to go over, and I'll put the link for this study uh, in the description. But um, there's still more to add to it, and, you know, I'll probably just go over the, the complete study on the website at some point. Um, you know, I'll just capture the desktop. And I'll just I'll just scroll through the website so you can see that that study. Uh, but, anyways, I'm saying that I'm going to go over things again and again and again. And basically, you know, Calvinism is a uh, the set of teachings that that people follow that John Calvin did. And uh, you know, he got a lot of ideas from Augustine, and uh, Luther had some of the same ideas. And uh, so I'm just kind of skipping around there, not going into details, but you can look up all this stuff online and, you know, there's a lot of false about it. There's, there's truth that you'll, you'll have to dig around. But, um, you know, you can see quotes from John Calvin himself, quotes from Luther, quotes from Augustine, and you know, I'm going to talk about a quote from Luther in this video. But, uh, and basically the people constructed like ba five basic points from John Calvin's teachings. There's this tulip. Uh, so each each of those five points has starts with a different letter. And um, so the first one is total inability or total depravity. And they say that man is um, so sinful that he cannot come to God. And um, basically, so you've got that total inability. And then you've got the U, which is unconditional election which is where God uh, unconditionally elects uh, people to salvation. So people are saved because God chooses them to be saved, basically. He predestines them. And then you got the L, which is limited atonement. Jesus only died for those who he chose to be saved, which is really messed up. All of this is really, of course. Uh, then you got the I, the... T U L I, yeah. The I is irresistible grace, um, that God irresistibly draws those who he chose to save to him. And then you have the P, which is the perseverance of the saints, which I think is one of the most accurate parts of the five points. The other ones I would totally reject. Um, the fifth one I think is pretty accurate, but you know, I'll go over all of these. Basically, what I'm going to go over today kind of starts with the um, total inability. And uh, one of the major passages or verses that they will use for that, and I want to destroy that. And uh, I want to give you the true interpretation of that. And so, let me think here. And basically, Calvinists will say that their doctrines start with total inability. They'll say, you know, man is so sinful that, um, you know, they can't come to God. And you know, if they could come to God, that they would always choose not to. Well, Calvinism really starts with unconditional election, you know, because they teach that God chooses who's going to be saved and who's going to be damned, you know, before creation. 
so that's really what it starts with. It starts with God's decree, okay? So it's a lie that their stuff starts with total inability. And uh, they twist things, and they're very, um, it's very deceiving, and can really get mixed, people mixed up. And, you know, I can see how people can read the Bible, and, and you can think different things, how you can think, um, why do things happen, and, and you can read in the Bible, and you can get this idea that things happen, because everything happens because God, it's God's will. I can see how people come to that. Uh, conclusion, which isn't true, because God's not the author of evil. It's not God's will for you know people to be murdered and things like that. Uh, God, you know, um, God, you know, God doesn't wish that anyone would perish, and we see that all throughout Scripture. But to for this idea that. Uh, God chooses who is saved and who is damned, and they have no choice in the matter, you know, that's just totally unbiblical, and it's hard to see how anybody can even come up with that, and you pretty much have to be indoctrinated into Calvinism to believe it, and, you know, so I can see how it is possible they, they can be convincing and twist things, and they try to, anyways, you know, you got to test everything with scripture. And so whatever belief somebody has, I say, you know, what are your verses? What are your proof texts? And we need to go to those verses and we need to say, okay, is this really trying to say what you're trying to say it says? And Calvinism is found to be false. So, and unfortunately, a brother who I have talked to since the beginning of this ministry, he was very supportive of me. Um, he's donated to the ministry and he talked to me a lot, we had phone conversations, and um, the last time we talked is that he said that he is now a Calvinist, and I'm pretty sure that we've talked about Calvinism before and condemned it, but for some reason he's been listening to James White or whatever, and this brother says he's a Calvinist now, and so we had a little bit of debate on Twitter, and uh, I was fed up with a lot of things in my life, especially that night in particular, I was having a bad night, and that was just, you know, the icing on the cake, and I was like, you know, brother, I don't really want to even talk about this right now, and he kind of wanted to keep going, and so I ended up blocking him, and I really just wanted to mute him. But brother, I've unblocked you, and, you know, I do care about you, love you, pray for you, and I hope they'll watch these videos. Um, but even if not, this is something I've been passionate about and wanted to get out there for a while anyways. And so, um, you know, I'm going to get... Like I said, I'm going to be throwing lots of stuff out there, but while I'm throwing stuff out there, I'm working on the website, building more specific, you know, studies, structured. And so in time, I'm going to put out well-produced videos refuting Calvinism. But now it's just, you know, I'm just uh, winging it, so to say, or whatever. But so I got a little note card here where I wrote down some of the basic things. And, you know, I'm just going to go over a few verses instead of, you know, instead of printing out the pages of my study or whatever and just reading off of that. You know, I've actually got my Bible out here, so I'm not going to flip through a whole bunch of verses, but I'm going to go through some. But we're going to talk about Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. Okay, so Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 12 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So it says that there are none that are righteous, there are none that understand, there are none that do good. Um, we've all gone out of the way, and so... That just reminds me of another point that i got to put on this website, the study, but I'm not going to go over that right now. So basically, what they really want to focus on the Calvinists here is, I'm to, I've said that they'll use this for their total, total inability doctrine, that men are unable to come to Christ, okay, of their own will. They don't have a free will. Uh, so that's what Calvinists teach. And so this is a passage that they'll use, but the main thing is this verse, verse 11, Romans chapter 3, verse 11, it says, There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. So they say, there is none that seeketh after God. Well, Martin Luther actually said in the bondage of the will that when this verse says that there are none that seeketh after God, that it means that none can come to God, okay, that, that none can seek after God. He says that 
when it says that none seek after God, it's because none can seek after God. Okay, that does not make sense logically or reasonably. Reason <laughs> it doesn't. It do, it defies scripture. It defies reason. Okay, because that's like to say that if I said, um, you know, I don't go to the store, or this man doesn't go to the store. Okay, it's not necessarily because they can't go to the store. Okay, it could be because they don't want to go to the store of their own will. Or maybe they are scared to go to the store. Maybe they do want to go to the store, but they're scared, so they don't. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't. So that is a false argument to say that because this verse says that there are none that seek after God, that they can't seek after God. That's just false. Okay, so it could be because they don't want to seek after God of their own will, Okay, or other reasons. You get it, right? So you can see that Luther was wrong there. And, you know, Luther's famous for, um, you know, his thesis or whatever, um, refuting Catholicism, saying that salvation is by faith alone, and that's great. But he also taught that man didn't have a free will. Okay, so he was a reformer. He split from the Catholic Church and started you know, the Protestant de denomination, basically. And so, you know, all these people that kind of worship church history, they look at him as someone great and stuff. And what he did was good, some of the things, but he also did some stuff that was bad, obviously, his teachings, okay? He did the bondage of the will. And he was actually kind of rebuked by a Catholic for that because of, uh, you know, his denying that men had free will. And that's kind of how it is with James White, too. You know, I watched, I've watched all these James White debates, and I love watching them. I love the crosstalk section where they go back and forth, and, um, you know, those are some of the best parts. But, you know, and James White, you know, he doesn't use the King James Bible. He goes to the Greek and the Hebrew, and he goes to church history, you know, a bunch of stuff that in the arguments I would just throw out. But um, one of his major errors is that he's a Calvinist. Okay, I've seen him debate Mormons. I've seen him debate Catholics and, and every other religion where they'll point out that he's a Calvinist and that he teaches that man doesn't have a will and that basically God is the author of sin. And they're right in pointing out that he's wrong. And so it's pretty foolish, okay? And he points out things that are wrong with Catholicism and stuff like that, sure. But, you know, they have almost just as much against him because of his false religion of Calvinism. But anyways, Martin Luther, uh, you know, taught that man didn't have a will. And um, so like I said, just because it's, a man doesn't go to a store doesn't mean that he can't. It's because he doesn't want to or he's scared to, etc. Um, now, some Calvinists, I just want to say that some Calvinists might also point to uh, John 6, 63 through 68, or John 8 through 42 through 47, and say that man is unable, because uh, those verses, there's a verse in those passages, one where Jesus says you cannot hear, and uh, maybe another one where he says you're unable to come. I'm not sure of the exact quotes. I'm not going to go to those right now. But they'll, they'll try to use those verses, and those are things that I'm going to go over in another video in more detail. But basically, I want you to know that those verses, that they say that you cannot hear, or you refuse to, or you're unable to, or whatever, or, or you're... No man is able to come to Christ, whatever. Okay, <laughs> I think that's what it says. No man is able to, or something like that. Or you're not able to. Um, anyways, the way that those are to be understood is that they're not able to or they cannot because they refuse to. Okay, man is unable because man is unwilling. Okay, that's the only, the only way that man is unable is because man is unwilling. And uh, the reverse is what Calvinists teach, and they'll say that um, man is unwilling because man is unable. And that doesn't make sense because you can't prove that a man is unwilling if he's unable. Okay, If his man is unable to come to Christ, then how can you prove that he's unwilling when he doesn't have the choice to begin with? So that doesn't make sense. But when the Bible says things like that, that that no man is able to, it's because they're unwilling, if a man is unwilling. Um, 
and I feel like I butchered that talking about that just because I don't I don't have those exact quotes, but I can go to it actually. It's fine because we're just winging it, right? So I hate to for people to watch these videos though, and me to just be all over the place. And but you can skip around or just go to the website. <clears throat> but we'll just go to one of these, maybe both of them. I should get a marker where Romans is. I don't know if I'll come back to that, but let's see. I gotta find John. I said John six and sixty three. And this, I don't want to focus too much on this, but okay. Okay. Here's what he says. In John 6, 65, and he said, Therefore I said unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And basically, if we just focus on that, no man can come unto me. And so, so when, when Luther said in Romans 3.10, or 3.11, whatever verse that was, 3.11, then Luther said that because it says no man seeks God, that means no man can seek God. And you say, well, no, that doesn't make sense because maybe man doesn't want to seek God, okay? And then, you know, somebody could say, well, what about John 6, you know, 65, where it says, no man can come unto me. And they'll be like, well, that's pretty clear. And it's like, well, no, it's not. Your interpretation isn't clear. It's not right because uh, no man can come to him only if... Um, You know what? I think that I'm just butchering this because I didn't put, I didn't really prepare. But basically, I guess it's more accurate with uh, John six or John eight forty two. Let's go to John eight forty two. I need to go over those verses by themselves, anyways. So it's unfortunate how I'm butchering this, but John eight forty two. Jesus said unto them. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceedeth forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Okay. They cannot hear his word because they refuse to. Okay. So that makes more sense with that. Maybe there's another explanation for John 6 uh, that I need to go over. I added those together. Maybe I should have looked at those separately. But anyways, let's stick with Romans 3. And like I said, Luther's interpretation of that is false. Just because it says that no man seeks God doesn't mean that no man can seek God or can't seek God. Um, also, I said that Calvinists will say that man is unwilling because man is unable. And that doesn't make sense because if he's unable, how do we know if he's unwilling? Also, I want to say that what do you think I'll word this if okay basically if man is unwilling then it puts the blame on man okay if man is unable then it puts the blame on God okay so if man is unable to seek God then man cannot be held accountable for not seeking God Okay, does that make sense? How can man be held accountable for not seeking God if man is unable to seek God because God made him that way? It doesn't make any sense at all. It puts the blame on God. Okay, Calvinism attacks God. That's how it is. So, um, but let's see that men do seek God. And there's plenty of verses for these. I'm just going to go over like one for each point. So let's go to Psalm 910. Let's go. This is my first time using this Bible for a study. This isn't my personal Bible that I usually use and love. And I'll probably switch around with different Bibles. But this is the Bible that a brother sent to me, which I'm really grateful for. It's uh, the Note Taker's Bible. And I don't have any notes in it yet, but I will. Um, but it's the one from the Bible Church. Or the church publishers. Anyways, it's amazing. 
I've seen videos with other people who had these and I always thought it would be really cool and, and I got blessed with this. It's just amazing. But any Bible, any King James Bible is a good Bible, you know. Even these ones that I've got at the Dollar Tree. You know, I read one, I had one of those when I was in jail for a while and it was like having gold, <laughs> you know. It, it doesn't matter. If you got a King James Bible, then you're set. So, so men do seek God, because Psalms 910. Psalms Psalm 910 says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hath not forsaken them that seek thee. So, so for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Uh oh, okay, so people do seek God. So Romans says they don't see God. Psalms says that people do seek God. Okay, so how do we uh, reconcile these verses? Let's also see that God wants men to seek Him in Isaiah 55 6. Isaiah 55, 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. So you, you could say this is basically like a command from Scripture. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Seek ye the Lord. No man seeketh after God. And the Calvinists say that that means that no man can seek after God. But yet we see that men do seek after God, and not only that, but God commands, God wants people to seek after him. Well, then if God wants, if God commands people to seek after him, but yet he made them unable to seek after them, that kind of makes God a mocker, you know? <laughs> you know, I want you to seek me, and then, well, I can't, you know, you made me unable to. So, <laughs> so how am I going to be held accountable for not doing so? Doesn't make any sense, does it? So how do we reconcile these verses? Because the Calvinist interpretation isn't seeming to make sense. So, let's also see that men are condemned for not seeking God. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13 says... For because ye did it not at the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. Oh, that's not the right one. That's First Chronicles. That's, that talks about seeking God, though. It's kind of ironic. I mean, there's so many verses about talking about seeking God. I mean, I have just a big list online. That's why I just picked one from each here. Because so I was like, you can just go to the website or I'll just go over that in a separate video. But I mean, it's just all over the place. You know, and you see these things all over the Bible that, you know, God doesn't want any to perish. God wants all men to come to repentance, etc., etc., etc. But these Calvinists, you know, their uh, doctrines say otherwise, that, you know, God only chose a select few uh, who are going to be saved, and the rest he chose to be damned, and it's all for his good will. <laughs> And it's like, okay, that's the complete opposite of what Scripture teaches all over throughout the Bible. So how are people getting messed up on this? So Second Chronicles 15, 13. And I'm sorry that I'm bumbling and stumbling and butchering this, but, you know, this is my first one here. And so it's been a while since I've been into the studies. I've been focused on so many other things. And uh, just give me some time, okay, to get things together. So, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13. Here we are at the right one. Okay. 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13 says that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death. 
whether small or great, whether man or woman. Wow, so whoever doesn't see God should die and be put to death. Well, that's pretty cruel if God made him unable to. You know, does it ring a bell that Calvinism just doesn't seem right? You know, it really makes me sick to my stomach, and it really, you know, it just it makes you wonder. I mean, that's that's how deceived the world is. That's how that's how people can get messed up into false doctrines. That you know, and I mean, there's honest good people that you know believe this stuff. You know, I'm not trying to say that people who are Calvinists and even Calvinist teachers and stuff are being deceptive on purpose and stuff, but they are. It is a deceptive doctrine, and. Oh, it just really gets to me. And I've had so many arguments and stuff with people who, I, I mean, I remember there's a, I mean, I've talked about it a couple of times in the past, but there was one guy who saw one of my videos on repentance saying that, you know, you need to repent and, um, you know, basically for salvation that, you know, repentance is involved and everything. And he messaged me and he wanted to have a phone conversation you know and he told me it was so good and everything and it really lifted up my spirits you know people are watching it and they agree and you know we discussed some things and the more he discussed you know he's listening to Sproul and he's listening to MacArthur and all these Calvinist people and he goes to like a Calvinist church and so you know I knew it was going to be bad if I asked him but eventually I'm just like are you a Calvinist he's like yeah and then next thing I know we're like debating and arguing for like 30 minutes and then that was over so uh, just, you know, it's not a good thing to argue over it all the time, but it happens. Um, and then there's that guy from, um, I can't remember his website, which I was pretty surprised. I can't even remember his name, but I made a video about it. <clears throat> hmm. Escapes my mind right now. But he's got some kind of apologetics websites. Oh, CARM. CARM.org. I don't remember what it stands for. Christian Apologetics Reformed Ministries or something, whatever. The guy's a Calvinist. Okay, He's got a lot of good stuff on his website that I've looked at. and So I was kind of honored when he was on my website. But then he's like trying to pound me with Calvinism. Like, you must believe Calvinism. This is my interpretation is right on this. It was the most messed up stuff. It's not even something that I've heard before from Calvinists. But, you know, that was that didn't go good either. So... But it happens. Um, so men do seek God. God wants men to seek him. Men are condemned, or and at a certain point in the Bible, he said, put them to death if they're not seeking God. Um, they're also commended for seeking God, okay, many times. But this is one that came to my mind at first, and probably a lot of other people. We were, we're in the New Testament all the time. So in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6, and you probably would already know, we're talking about seeking God here. Oops. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But yet there are none that seeketh after God, and that means that they can't seek after God. Hmm. Because they're unable, because God made them that way. Hmm. Wow. So he only rewards the men that he chose to, you know, who didn't have even a choice in the matter or whatever. You know, okay, wow. That's, that's really deserving of something, isn't it? I guess. Anyways. So, so I hope that you see from that that you you have to reconcile all this stuff. Romans 3.11 says, None seeketh after God. But yet, we see in Psalms 9.10 that men do seek after God. We see in Isaiah 55.6 that God wants men to seek Him. We see in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13 that men are condemned for not seeking God. And we see in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 that men are commended for seeking God. 
So how do we reconcile all that? Well, here's the interpretation. Okay, this is a more correct view of Romans chapter 3, verse 11. Is that all men, Jew and Gentile, which is pretty important, are generally inclined to seek their own interests, not God. Okay, and so it's important to know that this verse is talking of Jews and Gentiles because in Romans chapter 3, verse 9, the verse right before this passage, he says, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. Okay, so this is just him kind of elaborating more that all men are sinful. Jews and Gentiles, okay, are born into sin. And, <clears throat> and in a general sense, men don't seek after God. But that doesn't mean that they can't seek after God. Because obviously scripture shows in many, many places otherwise. So I just gave you a few of them today. And um, so that verse in no way teaches that men are unable to seek God or that they are unable to believe the gospel. Okay, and that it doesn't teach that they don't have a free will. So, anyways, sorry that that interpretation for John 6, uh, 63 and whatever, I think I need to look at that a little bit more, because maybe that's a little different. But basically the one in John 8, where he says that uh, you cannot hear my words, or whatever, it's because they've hardened their hearts, okay? And you see other verses, or they've hardened, you know, they've hardened their hearts, their ears are wax gross, they basically close their own ears to God, so they refuse to of their own will. Okay, so that should be pretty easy to understand. John 6 says, no man is able to come to me except for the Father who draws him, so I'll look at that one a little differently, but still Calvinists will try to use that and their interpretation is false again. So I feel a little bit exhausted and uh, I'm just glad that I got through this and uh, maybe tomorrow I'll go over the, the study on the website and add a little more. There's, there's a lot more that could be said just about that passage. You know, it says there are none that do good, and we can look at verses in Scripture that say otherwise of that as well. So, uh, there's lots of different, you could break down each section of that passage and show that the Calvinist interpretation is wrong each step of the way. But the, the big thing that they'll talk about is that no man seeks God. And we see all throughout Scripture that man does seek God. God commands men to seek Him and um, condemns when men don't seek Him. But I'm just repeating myself. Um, I want you to look at that yourself. Think about that. I want you to consider these things. I want you to go to the website and look at all the other verses and consider those. And see if, if you think that Luther's interpretation lines up. Okay. So, thank you for watching. And I'll say a prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. <sighs> this beautiful day. Another great day to be alive, to serve you. And just thank you for the study, Lord. I pray that you will open the understanding of those who are listening and watching this video. Help them to understand the scriptures. Help me to understand the scriptures. Help us to stay focused on you and focused on expanding your kingdom. And thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So expect more videos like this, hopefully better and better. But i um, just going to be going over different things. Anyway, uh, okay, thanks for watching, and God bless. Let me know what you think. I really want to know what you think. I want, I want you to know, you know, what questions you have. Um, it doesn't have to be on just Calvinism, but I do want to focus on Calvinism for a while. But eventually when I get some more days off and stuff, I'll venture into other things, I'm sure. So, um, but this is just the beginning for Calvinism, so... That's one of the main verses for their total inability thing, and I think that, you know, it's been shattered. So, anyways, God bless, guys. Have a good day.